uh, I'm ready. Let's do it. So this is what it takes. This is my about three and a half year journey of training, preparation, and fundraising in an attempt to become the youngest person in human history to ski 700 miles across Antarctica to the geographic South Pole. And this idea first started with some inspiration from a hero of mine, Mr. Louis Rudd. And in 2018, Louis completed a similar, much lengthier crossing of the continent from coast to coast, going over the pole, alone and without resupply. A journey that many people thought was impossible. And it was after I read his book on the journey that I began plotting a journey of my own. Um, so to give you some context, there's this little arm sticking out of Antarctica. If you look in the shoulder of it right here, you can see that there's frozen ocean, and that's where I was starting, in a spot called the Hercules Inlet, where I would then uh, be dropped off by a plane and start skiing, navigating crevasse terrain and intense cold as I made my way to the pole. And boy, is it cold up there. <laughs> It's so cold that when you breathe, the air wafts back in your face and freezes against your mask or skin. If it weren't for the goggles, it's so cold that as you ski forward, you squint to try and brace your eyes from the plunging cold. And then your eyelashes freeze shut, forcing you to break them open as they've been sealed. And so to prepare for this journey, I sold all my belongings in 2021, jumped in my van and moved to Bozeman, Montana so that I could train with some of um, the elite ultra running folks and mountaineers that are out here. Um, apart from my body, I also needed to learn a very specific skill set that takes care of you in the cold. I enlisted under Louis Rudd as a client on an expedition he was leading in Finsa, Norway, on the Hardanger Jokulin, which just means Hardanger Glacier, where I learned what he calls the dark arts of polar travel. I also had to learn to cope with the cold. Um, one of my favorite training techniques was in the middle of winter, I would jump in Bridger Creek, wait for my body temperature to start dropping, and then I would wander out of the river, single digit temperatures or lower, and with dexterity fleeing from my hands, pitch my tent. Um, you need to learn a lot about gear to survive out there. Everything down to the fibers that you're wearing and how they react to sweat. How to maintain a cooker when it's 40 degrees below zero. What sort of skins you need and to what length you need to drag hundreds of pounds of equipment. Uh, another thing that I learned from the Shackleton crew, and this all culminated last year in March of 2023, when I set out on the same glacier field for a 21-day solo expedition, proving to the powers that be that I could psychologically handle the isolation and physically handle the demands of the journey. Upon completion of that expedition, Louis and the Shackleton crew took me on. So now it went from being a book written by my hero to my employer, who I was then guiding under in Norway. And for the next eight weeks following my solo expedition, I joined him and his team as we taught other folks the same skill set. And it was not always easy. You can see here in this photo, after four days, consistent days of blizzarding conditions, my team needed some reprieve. And so we built a wall six feet high by 30 feet long of snow to encapsulate all of our tents and provide the folks some reprieve from the elements and a good night's sleep. I also enlisted the help of uh, experts in the field. So whether that be scientists or other polar expeditioners, and that is because I knew if I was ever going to have a chance of succeeding at this, I would need to have a very intimate understanding of both the environment and how to survive in it. Physically, or I should say, this isn't just a physical journey. It's quite a financially demanding journey. And so across those three and a half years, I went from uh, crowdsourcing, so that's crowdfunding, to private investment. I sought out corporate sponsorship and drained my own personal investments in savings all to believe in this trip, which I then toured throughout my home region of Appalachia, showcasing uh, throughout schools in the region the ways that I thought adventure sports and community could be the keys to unlocking a better mental health for the next generation to come. And there I was. My equipment freighted down to Chile. 
All of the, the sponsor videos and done, sitting at a table on the coast, cutting up every last bar and peanut and cho- piece of chocolate to try and remove packaging and get my kit down as light as it could be before deploying into the field. <laughs> You can imagine my excitement when I finally received this boarding pass. Um, You have to work with a logistics company when you're down in Antarctica. And so in the same way, I had to be vetted as a capable expeditioner. This uh, company had to be vetted to operate down there. And there I was in the middle of Union Glacier Base Camp. This camp is nestled within the Trans-Antarctic Mountain Range, and it serves as an incredibly lively and diverse hub of adventurers and scientists, tourists and seasonal staff, guides from all over the planet. I was there for four days waiting for the storms to recede before jumping on a twin otter remounted with skis instead of wheels that flew me out to the Hercules Inlet. They dropped me on the frozen ocean. I collected my equipment, I shook the pilot's hand and thanked her for a safe flight, and began my journey in isolation south. Now, 13 days in the journey, eight of which I had endured blizzards and pure whiteout. Unfortunately, I had succumbed to a a freak injury that left me completely unable to use my right arm. Um, A very dangerous moment in the field, and I was unfortunately medevaced, bringing my journey to an end. Now... And trying to cope with this journey, I was wondering what it is that I could return to and what I could look forward to next. And I immediately took back to the mountains, to my family, and to the community of adventurers that have been so kind to welcome me here in Bozeman. And I can say after a few months that I am now very excited to look forward to what's coming next.